Okay guys, so I'm starting off this video crying. It's, Chris keeps doing it. Okay, so we've been trying to figure out what the SQ for Square Institute, SQINST, is Chris Valentin's new vanity license plate on his car. Well, he, okay. So he just explained that instead of IQ or EQ, now they have SQ, spiritual intelligence. Remember how we just showed Richard in 2018 that standing in front of the brick wall, putting his hands, doing the little um, interlaced fingers and saying that he was going to Google? Well, Chris brought up that same story in this. And then for his next story, he starts talking about this fleet of 40 vehicles that he had up in Weaverville that he was working on. And he, it, I stopped before I even got past that point. So I know it's coming next. He's going to tell this story about how his whole crew couldn't be able to find underneath the fender. There's this piece and only Chris was able to find it. And this is the... You guys, when I tell you that Scott's car was tampered with and that it's Scott's death that brought Chris and Bill down here... <laughs> And not just making it up. People tampered with Scott Grubb's car. And it's what caused their death. And it brought this Templar militia into our town. I can't... Through me posting up on Facebook that Chris and Bill had something to do with Scott and Darren's death... I get a message from Scott's mom through somebody else because she won't talk to me directly... That says... Scott got his car from his grandfather. Yes, Crystal, I know this. He told me before he got the car, Grandpa's helping me get a car. But the car wasn't ready. They were refurbishing the car. Somebody else had the car before Scott had the car. I'm not blaming Grandpa for what happened. Somebody rigged that gas pedal to go down to the carpet and stick to the carpet and not come back up from the carpet. That's what made the boys drive off the bridge. I was in the car before that, before the bridge incident happened. The gas pedal stuck to the floor. We took the car on, on, I want to say your street name. We were on your cul-de-sac. We went from the house to the end of the street, to the end of E. We went down there and we were doing almost 50 miles, somewhere around 50 miles an hour because the pedal stuck to the carpet when we got back to the house scott went inside i did not go inside i did not witness scott talking to either of the parents i don't know that he did but he told me he did i stayed outside he told me we weren't allowed to drive the car anymore i flipped myself upside down and looked at the back side of the gas pedal because the gas pedal had gotten stuck to the floor like velcro and scott had to put his foot under the gas pedal and lift up the pedal to break the Velcro, the hook from... You guys, listen to Chris telling you how something inside of his head told him that there was a solenoid behind a fender. You don't think that Chris could have gotten something else in his head that just said, switch out this gas pedal for this gas pedal. Switch out this carpet for this carpet this all happened in Weaverville Chris tells the story about how this all happened in Weaverville 41 years ago let's see I'm 47 so this what his story would have happened in 1984 because Scott and Darren passed away when I was 17. I turned 18 in 94. They passed away when I was like New Year's Eve. So mathematically, 31 years ago, they passed away. So this happened 10 years before at least this story, according to Chris, and how he found a solenoid. But if this story happened 41 years ago, they didn't have solenoids under 41 years ago in, okay, 1984. 
that would have been when Chevy was switching over from still having carbureted to having fuel injection when he's talking about this. There's not going to be any solenoids underneath any fenders at that point. Chris's stories, if you go and examine them, never make sense. He tells another story, and I know that I should really get into letting him speak, but he tells this story about how he's running his mechanic shop and that he buys a computer program that only allows for six different variants. And so when he's using this program, he doesn't have any space to make a difference of price listing between the front of the house, retail prices, and the wholesale prices from the backside of the house. And so because he doesn't know um, anything about computers, he goes and tells us, that um, he goes and asks professionals. The professionals don't know how to fix it so that he can have 12 lines of data inside this program instead of only six lines of data. And so um, the professionals, he goes to the people that created the software and he claims that even the software creators can't make the program have from six lines of data to 12 lines. And so what mathematically in anybody's head if because chris is telling this story that all the wholesalers all the mechanic shops are getting mad at him because he's charging them retail and then when he gets caught for charging them retail they throw a fit and so he's trying to cover his butt by telling a spiritual story well then his spiritual story includes that he has a vision of this set of 15 lines of code and he writes out this code and then he walks up to somebody and says look i've got the code and that code makes it so that the computer now has 12 lines of input but here's the problem if you think about this logically let's go to o'reilly auto parts i worked at abe's motors in Nol on nolensville road in nashville and i would drive over to the parts department now, the parts department has a back of the house computer and the front of the house has a front of the house computer. They have different servers. If Chris was having an issue and claiming that it was going to cost him $24,000 to have a new computer program written with 12 lines of code instead of six or inputs or whatever, he wanted to be able to charge different for front of the house and back of the house off of one program, the computer programmers would have suggested to him that he buys a second computer, have one in the front of the house and one in the back of the house. Nobody would have said, Chris, we just can't figure out the answer. It's going to cost you $24,000. And then Chris has an epiphany that makes it so that the, the coding just magically pops into his head and he fixes the problem. You guys, none of this stuff is in the Bible. These are, Chris is a verifiable schizophrenic. Go to the video that we have that says Chris Valentin, DSM-5, verifiable schizophrenic. Remember, scripture says that the Masons are the ones who reject Yeshua as the Messiah. Have you never read the scriptures? It's the Masons, the builders, who rejected Yeshua as the cornerstone, and they're the ones who end up having um, their souls seared as with a hot iron. The Freemasons do transorbital lobotomies, and Chris was a schizophrenic, and even, um, oh, I can't think of that guy's name right now. Go watch the video about Chris Valentin being a schizophrenic, and then tell me that a schizophrenic wouldn't have been able to go in and work on Scott's car and have no conscience whatsoever about murdering my friends so that his Templar militia and his bestie buddy Bill gets his dad's church back by using trauma-based mind control over the entire, everything that happened from Scott and Darren's death. Let me explain this. Okay, so while I was up on the stage giving part of the eulogy for Scott and Darren's death, right after that, um, at the end of their eulogy, they're doing a thing where, this is the only time I've ever been on Bethel's stage. 
This is the only time I've ever spoken from Bethel stage is giving my best friend's eulogy. So, Crystal told me that if Scott was truly my best friend, that I wouldn't try and drag him and Darren into what I dislike about Bill and Chris. But you cannot let go of the fact that Bill and Chris now is verifiable with 230 videos that they have brought in a Templar, Luciferian, Kabbalah-worshipping militia cult into our town that is teaching BSSM is the Kabbalah training. Everything that they're accused of doing bad is found in Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Now, you have to get away from these guys teaching you Kabbalah. Look at, look at all these little dots and the connection things behind him. These guys are, are claiming to have a, an intelligence that comes from spirituality, a spiritual intelligence. According to this guy, the mind of God is the spiritual intelligence. But according to scripture, the mind of God is the Torah. That's why he gave the laws to Moses. He wanted his people to have his laws. Chris Valentin takes you away from the Sabbath. He takes you away from the Moedim, the holy feast dates. He takes you away from keeping the, the, um, the law of Torah. And he says... This is all Sunday worship stuff that Sunday worship people do that doesn't have anything to do with the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Chris is one of these people who's saying, I'm a prophet. But the Bible says the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I did not speak to them, neither did I send them. And these guys are all doing everything. Freemason. If Scott heard, overheard that these guys were Masons, they could... And they thought that he was going to expose them. They would be able to say without a guilty conscience that according to their teachings, they can take him out. <laughs> you guys get that? So, I've reached out. If Rhonda would like to reach back out to me and or... Um... Barbara M., who I've been talking to from Valley Christian Fellowship. I can explain all of this stuff. Okay, I don't want this video to go long, but I want you guys to understand this from the mindset that I've got 10,000 hours of research and how I see this is equated in the same way. Okay, I'm going to specifically talk to the people from Valley Christian Fellowship that were around Scott and Darren when this happened. Okay? Mike, Pastor Mike, used to tell us the story that he got from, I think it was one of the Dobsons in 1984, one of their books, or 88, one of their books, about if we took a silver dollar for every one of the miracles that Jesus had performed or made it so that the chances of all of the miracles, Jesus performing, all of them happening, all of the um, prophecies coming to fro to fulfillment through Yeshua from the Bible, that it would be the equivalent odds wise of taking the silver dollar and stacking it a foot deep or three feet deep, the size of Texas, and then taking one silver dollar, painting it red, flying over the state, throwing it out anywhere, mixing up the whole thing so that it's a foot, three feet deep, sending someone out blindfolded, and expecting them to be able to come back with that one silver dollar that was painted red without taking off the blindfold, them finding it, the odds of all of that stuff that Yeshua fulfilled all the prophecies is to that degree of impossibility. When you see the 230 proofs that I've shown inside the New Apostolic Reformation. The whole New Apostolic Reformation is Freemasonry. That's what it is. The foundation upon which all Freemasonry is built is the Kabbalah. The, everything that's bad inside of the New Apostolic Reformation is Kabbalah. It's Kabbalah teachings. Once you figure out that those 230 videos are all connected to Freemasonry, the chances of Scott and Darren's death not being connected to this group would be the same as if you took the 
state of Texas filled it up with silver dollars, marked it with one red silver dollar, threw it into Texas, mixed up the bag, and sent somebody out blindfolded. The odds of their murder being considered an accident after seeing all of the proofs of what they brought into town. Okay, when they brought the kids up to be able to accept Jesus at Scott and Darren's memorial service, that was part of their trauma-based mind control. They had just murdered my friends, and then they started reintroducing Sozo. And Sozo is hypnotic mind control. I worked in the magic industry, you guys. Please listen to me. Go back and, and watch the video about the hypnotism. Hypnotism in the Prosperity Church. Please go back and watch that video. It tells you what's going on inside of Sozo and Scientology. Go back and watch the video. I, I have four or five videos on Sozo. Go please, go watch all of them. One will show you how Sozo lines up with Freemasonry. One will show you how Scientology and Sozo, the auditing system from Scientology and Sozo, are the same. You guys come out of the Masonic, Luciferian, New Age. They really worship Lucifer. You have to come out of this deception. Let's let Chris talk. So they bought these 10 brand new Chevy trucks. This was in the 80s. And these trucks were all computer controlled. This was a very new thing in the late 70s and the, and the, in the early 80s. And there, no, there wasn't a lot known about this kind of technology. And so here we are, you know, mechanics learning how to be technologists and work on, on these trucks. And so my largest customer, obviously, you want to please them. And they had this truck, these trucks for about a week. And they tow one of the trucks in to the shop. It wouldn't start. So I'm like, okay. So I get involved and I work on it for a couple three hours and I can't figure out what's wrong with it. It's obviously under warranty. So I called the GM and I say to the general manager, hey, you know, um, I, I can't figure out what's wrong with this truck. It's actually under warranty. Why don't you have them tow it to Reading and uh, and have them fix it? And he said, Chris, there's just no way I'm going to do that. Like, we have 10 of these trucks, and we're planning on getting 10 more next year. You, you just need to figure it out. I don't care what it costs. Just fix it. I'm like, okay. Well, thanks for believing in me. I was a little bit like, oh, that's this is going to be tough. So um, through the week, I inter actually called General Motors. I called the Chevy dealer. And they said, Wow, has he expanded on this story. Please go back in and listen to the first versions or two or three versions of the story because the, you have to remember these narcissists get into a loop where they will tell the same story 50 times over and over and over again. It will glorify them and it will make them think that they're golden gods and everybody else should think that they're golden gods. It, I the group of people that took my child from me that are connected to Bethel, including when my my son's mom went and married one of the Bethelites that came from Trinity Center, which means that their family was Bethel, and they went and kidnapped my child away from me, and I don't get to see my eight-year-old son because of Bethel teachings. And then Bethel people getting involved, like Kimberly um, Johnson and those people who have given themselves a mission to take over. It, do you guys realize that Redding, California kidnaps more children through their CPS systems than any place else? And we've got more occult symbolism than any place else. And that all of our logos on our buildings for all these people who say that they're helping are the ones that the FBI says are the pedophile uh, practitioners. Kimberly Johnson's, Bill Johnson's ex sister in law, runs three different businesses, nonprofits, that all kidnap children away from families in Reading and then give them to people who they think are qualified, who qualify through their idea. There are groups of people in this town who are financially benefiting from kidnapping children and giving them to Bethelites.
My God. Hi, I'm Chris Valentin, and I'm the author of the book Spiritual Intelligence, and I want to invite you to this masterclass on spiritual intelligence. I want to talk to you. Let's start off with some rebellion. Call no man master. And yet, that's one of the things that pops up inside this group all the time. We are teaching master classes. And then they will start putting up, we're having 101 classes. 101 for the layman means basics. That still is the basics, but 101 is the basics logo used inside Freemasonry. So when you see 101, then you go and you check the rest of their logos because 101 is still a Masonic term. Even though it's connected to all of your basic classroom stuff, and they say 101, it's the basic math. 101, it's the basic science. 101, it's the basic this. They're, that's correct. They're telling you this is the basic understanding of Kabbalistic science, and this is the basic understanding of Kabbalistic math that you're going to need to understand Kabbalistic. Right. So when you hear somebody tell you that you're going to be taking a master class and Christians, according to scripture, according to the Bible, it says call no man master. Any of these guys who keep giving themselves titles, title this, title that, I'm a master class, this, I'm a master class, that, I got a big square on my head, big black square on my head at graduation that says that I was in the cult of Saturn, but I'm not going to admit to you that I'm in the cult of Saturn wearing those black dresses that every single graduate is wearing tells us that they were part of the system that was sacrificing the children to Baal and Moloch. The priests who were doing that are the ones who wear the black robes. The same reason that judges in our courthouses wear black robes. They were wearing the black robes because when they were sacrificing the children, the ashes that would get on the black robes, they could just dust it off more easily. Right now, our court systems are doing the exact same thing. They're kidnapping our children, my child, giving them to pedophiles and people who have no business having our children and giving them, giving our children away to these people who in their heads have told themselves that they're special enough for going through the indoctrination that they have the right to steal our children. Talk to you a little bit about spiritual intelligence. There's going to be six modules. You're going to have about 24 sessions. We're going to have some interviews with people. And I want to introduce you to the idea of spiritual intelligence, actually thinking like God and thinking God thoughts. Let's go to the whiteboard for just a minute. We have known well IQ and EQ, but I want to introduce you to something that we call SQ, spiritual intelligence. And uh, I, I want to show you how spiritual intelligence actually transcends all other intelligence. I remember a couple of years ago when a team of us went to Google and we got invited to do a seminar on spiritual intelligence. In the class, we had several people who were into automated reasoning, AI, it was a really powerful group of very intelligent people, and we were on a closed circuit television so that everybody in Google had access to this seminar we did. So Bethel also has a closed circuit of computers that's the reason that if you go and look at all their buildings they have those little tiny satellites on the corners of their buildings and you can see that the lake boulevard um satellite can be bounced over to the twin view satellite that can be bounced the lake boulevard other satellite is pointed towards the camp the um college campus drive uh 933 three, College View Drive. Okay, sorry. So, it's one of those things, you guys. Back to Chris and his story. I have to stop in between or else I can get copyright strikes. We did on spiritual intelligence. And I began to talk to them about tapping in to the mind of God. 
and how, and I told them this story that I'd like to tell you. Several years ago, I was in a little church that Bill Johnson was in. He was actually our pastor. It was in a little place called Weaverville. I think if you're in Weaverville, it'd be very hard to get invited to Google. But we managed to get invited years later to Google. And there's about 40 people in our church. And Bill Johnson came, and he was a young man. This is 41 years ago. And the very first series that Bill did was on actually on the gifts of the Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit. And so with, because our church was so small, we'd meet in the morning and Bill would teach on the gifts of the Spirit. And then we'd come back in, on Sunday evening and we would actually have an activation. So if we were doing the, like the word of knowledge, then we'd actually practice the word of knowledge in the evening. And we were doing that in the midst of one of uh, a crisis that I was having down at the repair shop. One of my largest customers, my biggest fleet customer, who had about 40 trucks that we repaired, they bought 10 brand new Chevy trucks and they would buy like 10 every they rotate like 10 trucks out every year or every every second year so they bought these to figure it out I don't care what it costs just fix it I'm like okay well thanks for believing in me I was a little bit like oh that's this is gonna be tough so um, through the week, I inter- actually called General Motors. I called the Chevy dealer. Uh, they, they faxed me. Remember those old fax machines? They faxed me a wiring diagram. They faxed me all the troubleshooting guides. They were very kind to me. And, and I actually got on the phone with the technician, I think, more than once that week and talked through lo- what was happening. He had me test this and test that. And, and, and about, I think, four or five days went by, and that truck would not start. I named it the Beast out of the Book of Revelation. So that Saturday, I'd worked on the truck all day Saturday. Next morning, Sunday, of course, we're in this activation. Well, the activation was actually on the word of knowledge. So Bill taught on the word of knowledge. Okay. So it appears that I'm going to have to go back and get Chris's first video because this thing says, I kept working on the truck and I kept working on the truck. What did his first testimony about that say? Well, that is a quite an interesting video title that Chris had 10 months ago. The importance of how you retell the story of your life. So I'm changing the subject a little bit. Brian, what would give Chris the want to be able to kill your friends? I mean... The love of money is the root of all types of evil, right? So, Chris is going to tell a story about how he came into Reading. Two months later, his business was upside down. They had to file for bankruptcy. In this version, he says it was $1.8 million, something like that. Um, his numbers are always different, always. And from his book to every time he tells the story, his numbers are always different um coincidentally after chris ends up getting his 1.8 million dollars paid off then a mysterious stranger comes and pays off his house that was a six hundred thousand dollar house which i've still not been able to find a a history of chris valentin ever owning a house over four hundred thousand dollars so not saying that he couldn't have, but even the house that he's in right now is not a $600,000 house. So if he was in a $600,000 house, he downgraded the house that he would have been in, uh, according to um, if you go on Zillow and then you go pull up the address where Officer Will Williams from the Reading Police Department got busted with Chris Valentin's ex-daughter-in-law at Chris Valentin's old house with a half million dollars between the house and the warehouse. There was a half million dollars of drugs and cash. And coincidentally, some random person, according to Chris's testimony inside of his book, says that Chris that um, Chris woke up in the middle of the night. He told Kathy, I just had a vision from, or a talk from God and God's going to pay off our house. And then some random stranger walks up to Chris and tells Chris that he's going to pay off the house. And Chris, trying to do what's called a humble brag, does this thing and says, no, 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 you're not going to do it. And then the guy keeps persisting and persisting for days and days and weeks and weeks and months and months and months. 
and or however the story goes, but it's a long time. And finally, Chris says, all right, if your pastor tells you that you're allowed to pay off my house, you can pay off my house. And the guy is paying off Chris's house because according to the story, if the guy sold his $2 million boat, paid off Chris's um, $486,000 of his $600,000 mortgage, that this guy was now allowed by God to go and buy a $6 million boat if he would go and sell his $2 million boat and pay off Chris's $486,000 mortgage. So now the mysterious stranger, I don't know who that is. I have not been able to find an answer to that question of who was the person that paid off Chris's house or what house. But then we fast forward and we've got the head of um, business fraud for the Reading Police Department happens to be um, married to the lady that's running Sozo, and he is in charge of stopping business fraud in Reading in a town where his cult that he is a board member of, Larry Leapshire, you know, banning Leapshire from Jesus culture, who's using musical hypnotism to be able to take mind control of Bethel and his Larry Leapshire's wife, who is Sozo, and Larry's in charge of business fraud division in Reading, who's hiding all the business fraud in Reading. This is how chaos magic works, where we're going to find all the business fraud, but we're going to hide it. Okay, guys, so Mysterious Stranger pays off Chris's house. Now, Jason Valentin gets divorced from his wife, Will Williams, marries Jason Valentin's ex-wife. Everybody knows that Jason Valentin has been sexually abused inside of this group by men inside of this group. Paying attention yet? The Freemasons at the 14th degree have rituals that I am not about to get into. It's not for all of you guys. I understand there's exoteric 14th degree. There's an esoteric 14th degree. That one includes a minor child, minor boy, and a videotape so that you can be bribed later and kept in check for whatever comes above the 14th degree in the esoteric side. When you reach the 14th degree on the exoteric side, you just have to learn how to read Hebrew and that kind of stuff around that area, 14th degree. So Mysterious Stranger pays off Chris's house. And then after Mysterious Stranger pays off Chris's house, Bethel starts giving Reading Police Department big giant chunks of money. You know, $500,000 here. $50,000 for a drone so that they can try and entrap more people so that they can be able to approve marijuana grows, then go let the locals grow outside, then fly their drone over the top, go bust the grow, send the drugs from the grow through their own police department, Will Williams and Chris Valentin at Chris Valentin's house that Bethel is giving, they gave him a near a million dollars. You guys, this whole group, whole group, whole group is a militia. It's no different than looking at an actual Mason Lodge, picking it up and putting it inside Bethel's walls. That's exactly what you're seeing. And consequently, the bottom line is we went broke. We got here two years. I mean, we got here two months. And after two months, instead of having $200,000, we owed $1.8 million. So we, uh, yeah, it was kind of, it was a little rough. <laughs> we owed 122 suppliers. And so um, it was pretty stressful. And we'd only been here two months. And the school wouldn't start for seven more months. So we went to, the, we went to talk, we went in. Okay, now. The school wouldn't start for seven more months. See where the red dot's at? Seven months later, after Chris has gotten to town, that's, he says that seven months later that BSSM starts. That's the introduction. Remember, he 
here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads of the beast of Revelation are the seven mountains on which the whore of Babylon sits on. And they are the seven kings. Five have fallen. One is. The other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must remain a little while. But the seven mountain mandate that's saying that they're supposed to be able to take over everything in Reading is hiding the seven mountain Ponzi scheme that made it so that Chris could pay off his debtors. Okay, watch this. It's been explained to me for years how using a financial calculator. Whoops. It's been explained to me. Oh, this is my personal testimony, by the way. My dad was at Bethel inside the financial meetings, and he brought me back this information somewhere around 2001 or 2002 when I was working for the Tennessee Titans, kind of. I was running Tennessee Titans football stadium for Papa John's, and I was working at Kroger Night Shift. And so I had something like, in 2002, as a 22-year-old, I was making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year for those next three or four years, and so my dad knew that I had money, and he said, "Have you considered this? Let me show you what I found." So I'm going to read what he found, but he doesn't understand that he found the Ponzi scheme even though he doesn't understand it as a Ponzi scheme. He explained all the pieces that would make this system. He would need, we would need these parts in this system to make this system function. And so this is what he, this is seven months after Chris Valentin got to town and said that he was doing, going bankrupt. Then seven months later, BSSM starts and they force the people, the students to pay their hosts $400 a month in our town when it doesn't cost that much to live in our town. So they start this thing of price setting. This whole, go back and watch this video, please. Please, please, please. Because this video shows all the math that would be required for someone to understand how Chris Valentin truly paid off his bankruptcy. The way this scam, this scams the down payment for money for the houses, the BSM students that come from out of the country were still required to pay the four hundred dollars to their to bless their hosts but they were required to pay nine hundred dollars of the session in advance so if you put so think about this the people that own dutch brothers right now have a listing on craigslist saying that they are selling off the contents of five rental units so the they the lady in charge of Dutch Brothers is also one of our mayors, along with Julie Winter from Bethel, who's one of our mayors. And this lady, who's one of our mayors, owns house rentals. That The amount of stuff that came out of these five rental units was massive. And it's her, it's her husband, Mike, that, it's, that owns Dutch Brothers that's selling off this massive collection of stuff. These people are working in unison to kidnap our children, steal our property, and take over our town. They are forcefully making us using mathematical solutions that there, you know, there's a way to be able to win at Monopoly every time by buying up all the houses first and then switching to the hotels. And then, well, these guys came in and they just played that exact game that you can win playing Monopoly every single time by using this set of rules. These guys came in and they're using that set of rules. They're taking over our town using seven mountain dominion theology from the Templars. They've created this Ponzi scheme and Chris Valentin is going to get his house paid off by using this Ponzi scheme.